Hey Commanders and welcome back to Spacefaring Chronicles. So today we're taking a look at how to get Elite Dangerous running in VR on the MetaQuest 2 headset. The process should work pretty much the same for all MetaQuest headsets and while the focus is on the Quest 2, some of the tips and steps may be useful for players using other VR headsets as well. So in this video we'll walk through why you might want to try Elite Dangerous in VR, what makes it such a game changing experience and then we'll cover what you'll need to do to make it happen and take you through the full setup process step by step to get everything working. I'll also be sharing some top tips to help you get the most out of your VR experience, including how to easily switch between VR and standard 2D displays, as well as some keybinds and control configurations that can make playing in VR much smoother. And lastly, we'll spend a few minutes just talking about motion sickness, what causes it, how to reduce its impact, and how to stay comfortable during some of the long longer play sessions. So why play Elite Dangerous in VR? Well, Elite Dangerous was built from the ground up with VR in mind, and with one notable caveat, it offers an exceptional virtual reality experience that's absolutely worth exploring. So if you already own a VR headset and you haven't yet tried Elite in VR, you're missing out on one of the most immersive ways to experience spaceflight in any game. The sense of scale is on a whole new level. Ships feel massive, space stations loom overhead with true presence, and celestial bodies like planets and asteroid belts stretch out around you with breathtaking depth. One of the more striking moments for new VR pilots is simply sitting in your cockpit and looking around. The first time you glance behind you or look up at your ship's canopy, it's genuinely jaw-dropping. But VR isn't just eye candy, it can enhance gameplay too. With a much wider and more natural field of view, piloting becomes more intuitive. Docking, launching, navigating asteroid belts and even dogfighting in tight combat zones can feel smoother and more controlled thanks to the added situational awareness that VR provides. So one thing to keep in mind before diving in is what kind of activities you're planning to do in Elite Dangerous. If your session involves a lot of jumping between the game and third party tools like Inara, EDDB or Coriolis, then VR might not be the most convenient option. Constantly taking off your headset to check a web browser can quickly become frustrating. There are ways to bring a browser into your VR environment as an overlay, so tools like OVR Toolkit or Steam VR Overlays can help, but that's a bit of an advanced setup and it's not something we'll be covering in this video. Also, there's a big caveat when it comes to the Odyssey expansion, specifically the on-foot gameplay. So while spaceship and SRV activities do support VR in Odyssey, on-foot sections do not. And once you disembark and go walking around, your VR headset essentially switches to showing a flat 2D screen floating in a virtual space. It's playable, but it definitely breaks the immersion. So the key takeaway here is flight and SRV activities are where VR shines in Elite Dangerous, and that's where you'll really feel the benefit of the immersion. Whether it's dogfighting in a conflict zone, scooping fuel from a star, or tearing across a planetary surface in your SRV, it's these moments where VR truly elevates the experience. All right, let's talk about what you'll actually need to get Elite Dangerous running in VR. First up, you'll need a VR headset, funnily enough. And in this video, I'm using the MetaQuest 2. But the process should be very similar for other MetaQuest headsets like the Quest 3 or the Quest Pro. And then next, let's talk about your PC hardware. So VR is fairly demanding, but Elite Dangerous is generally well optimized. So you'll want a decent, powerful machine a reasonably fast CPU, a solid GPU, and a good chunk of RAM. My current setup runs the game on ultra settings, and I'm running an Intel Core i5 12th generation, 64 gig of RAM, an NVIDIA RTX 4060 GPU, and I'm running Elite off an NVMe SSD card. So don't worry if your rig isn't quite that powerful. I've also tested the game on a PC with just 16 gig of RAM and a GTX 1050 Ti, and I was still able to play comfortably on medium to high settings. Your mileage is going to vary depending on your hardware, but you don't need top of the line gear to enjoy Elite in VR. I've done this on both Windows 10 and Windows 11, and the process works with copies of Elite Dangerous launched with the Frontier launcher and also through the Epic Games launcher. I haven't tested it with the Steam version, but there's no reason why it shouldn't work in exactly the same way. Because you'll be wearing a headset, you would really want to be comfortable with your controls. I highly recommend using a HOTA setup or at least a games controller. Trying to fly a spaceship with just using a keyboard and mouse while flying to the world around you is not something I'm going to suggest. So let's talk about connectivity then. One of the key parts of the setup is how your headset connects to your PC. And there are two main options here. 
So firstly, you could use a wired connection using a USB-C cable, and this works really well and it's the most stable. Or secondly, you can use a wireless connection using what they call AirLink, and this gives you the freedom to move around without cables getting in the way. I personally use AirLink most of the time and it works great, but there are a couple of important things to note for best performance. Firstly, your PC should be connected to your network via an Ethernet, that's a, a wide connection. And your VR headset needs to be on a 5 GHz network and not 2.4 GHz. If either of those conditions isn't met, you might run into stuttering or connection issues. When it works though, AirLink is fantastic, but keep in mind you'll be limited by battery life. So on a standard battery, I usually get around 1 hour and 15 minutes of playtime before needing it to recharge. Alright commanders, so let's get down to the actual setup process. This is how to get Elite Dangerous running on your MetaQuest headset. So step one, you've got to prep your gear. Make sure your MetaQuest headset is fully charged and that both the headset firmware and the Meta software are fully up to date. Also make sure Elite Dangerous is installed and up to date on your PC. Step number two, install the Link software. You'll need to install the MetaLink software on your PC. I've dropped the link for that in the description below and once that's installed you give your PC a reboot. It helps to ensure that everything's registered and ready. Step number three, connect your headset. Launch the MetaLink app on your PC and follow the steps to connect your headset. You'll need to approve the connection both in the app and inside the headset itself. Just follow the on-screen prompt and once connected it should show your headset as connected in the app. Step number four, open the desktop mode in VR. So you put your headset on and you launch desktop mode from your Meta interface. This essentially brings your PC desktop into VR, giving you access to your desktop and apps. Step number five, you launch Elite Dangerous. So you start the game just as you normally would via the Elite Dangerous launcher. And once you're at the main menu, head into Options, Graphics, Sweet D, and if everything's working properly, you should now see some options for HMD display. And HMD just stands for head mounted display. So let the appropriate setting for your headset, in my case, I using the MetaQuest 2, I choose HMD with speakers. And as soon as you select that option, the game should transition to full VR mode and you're in. So welcome to the cockpit commander. And then step six, it's gonna be time to tweak. So once you're comfortable navigating the menus and getting around in VR, the next step is to optimize your experience. And that means fine tuning some settings for performance and comfort. And we'll cover that in just a moment. So let's now talk about the graphic settings. And that's something that can really make or break your VR experience in Elite Dangerous. I've shared the exact graphic settings I use down in the description below, but just a heads up, these are tailored to my specific PC rig. So your results may vary depending on your setup. The key components that really impact your performance in VR are Firstly, your GPU, that's your graphics card. Secondly, your CPU, that's your processor. And then finally, your RAM. It's not just the amount, but it's also the speed of the memory as well. It's worth doing a bit of research to find the recommended settings for your particular configuration. There are great community forums and Reddit threads out there full of helpful information. If you're seeing stutters or frame rate drops in VR, you may need to dial things back a bit. Smooth performance is way more important than ultra visuals when you're in the headset. The immersion matters far more than the shadows on your dashboard. All right, commanders, here's top tip number one, and it's a game changer. If you're planning to switch between playing Elite Dangerous in VR and then on a regular 2D monitor. So download and install ED Profiler. It's a fantastic tool developed by community legend, Dr. Kai. I've linked it for you down in the description. This tool makes it so much easier to manage your graphic settings across different play styles. It automatically detects your current Elite Dangerous config and lets you save it as a profile. And my recommendation, obviously create one profile with your usual 2D settings and another profile specifically tuned for VR. And then, before launching the game, you just open ED Profiler, choose the profile that you want, click Apply, and you're good to go. No more manually adjusting sliders and toggles each time you swap between VR and flat screen. It also lets you tweak other options like HUD colors and more. It's super handy. And as a bonus, ED Profiler comes with a default VR profile built in. It's a great starting point. You load that up, test it out, and then tweak the settings to suit your own headset and PC setup. Trust me, it'll save you time and make your experience much smoother in the long run. One point to note, when using this tool for the first time, it can look a bit complicated. And also, it exhibited some strange behavior when creating and saving the profiles. My advice would be to use the following process to create your first two profiles, one for normal 2D gameplay and one for VR gameplay. So firstly, 
open ED Profiler. You click on Detect Current Settings and this loads the config that you use in the game currently. Click on Save to Existing Profile and select 2D. When you click on the default 2D profile it will now load that configuration. Next, you click on one of the VR buttons on the right hand side. I'm using VR High as an example in this video. This loads up the default settings of VR High into the ED Profiler program. You click again onto the Save Existing Profile button and this time you click on the VR button. You've now configured your default VR profile. To apply these settings to the Elite Dangerous game, you choose the default profile that you need, in this case I'm selecting the default VR profile, and click on the Apply button. ED Profiler will then update the Elite Dangerous configuration file for graphic settings, and when you load up the game it should use those settings. When you want to switch back to 2D mode, close the game down, load up ED Profiler, click on the default 2D profile button, and then click on Apply. And when you load up Elite Dangerous, it will then have the settings for playing Elite Dangerous in your normal 2D mode. You can create further or additional profiles. You simply set the graphic settings that you want to apply. You click on the Save as New Profile button and enter a name for the profile. This means you could have different profiles for different VR headsets. It also means you could more easily test different configurations to see what suits your PC setup. It's here where I've seen some strange behavior around how the software manages profiles. My advice would be once you've created a new profile and saved it, then close down the ED Profiler software before reopening it again. This appears to solve the problem for me. The software can appear to be a bit complicated to start with, but it's worth spending some time learning your way around it and some of the intricacies because once it's working properly, it saves you a lot of time. Alright commanders, let's talk about actually playing the game in VR because this is where things really change. Switching from 2D to VR feels like stepping into a whole new game, and even simple actions like taking off or docking at a station suddenly feel epic and immersive. And that's before you get into a dogfight in a resource extraction site, or head out mining, or just go bouncing across the surface of a planet in your SRV. But, and this is important, the biggest challenge isn't the visuals, it's the controls. You need a setup that you're completely comfortable with. Ideally your muscle memory should do the work, because in VR you can't just glance down at your keyboard. So a HOTAS setup or a games controller is absolutely ideal here. If you're playing with a mouse and keyboard it's totally doable but you'll need to be very familiar with your keybinds because fumbling around for the right key in VR can be very frustrating. Take some time to fine tune your bindings and get them to feel natural and trust me the more confident you are with your controls the more immersive and enjoyable your VR experience is going to be. Okay, so here's a quick but essential tip that will save you a lot of frustration during your VR sessions. From time to time, you'll notice your view in VR drifting slightly, or maybe it just feels off-center, and that's totally normal. But thankfully, the devs at Frontier have included a way to recenter your view with a simple keybind. This lets you quickly reset what the game considers your forward-facing direction. It's super useful if you've shifted in your seat or if your headset position gets misaligned. So my advice? Set this to something easy to reach, a button you can find by touch alone. For me, I've mapped it to the reset button on my Logitech X52 HOTAS throttle. It's always close at hand. You'll find this setting in Options, Controls, Ship Controls, Miscellaneous, and then Reset HMD Orientation. Take a minute to bind it before you launch into the black. It'll save you a ton of hassle mid-flight. So top tip number three, configuring the mode switches. So this one's all about controlling those cockpit panels that pop up when you look around in VR. By default, when you glance in the direction of a panel, it automatically opens, which can be super handy, but I find it can also get a bit distracting during intense gameplay. So if you want to turn off the automatic panels, here's how. You go to options, controls, ship controls, mode switches, looking at panel, and set those to does nothing and this way panels won't just pop up when you look around. But of course, if you do this, you'll need another way to bring up those panels manually when you want them. So the default keybinds, which is one, two, three, and four still work, but they're not very VR friendly since you can't easily see the keyboard. Instead, you can set up a keybind on your HOTAS or a controller under the same menu. So if you go to options, controls, ship controls, and mode switches, look for the UI focus keybind. I've mapped it to the E button on my HOTAS. And here's a trick. Pressing your UI focus button plus your UI navigation control, like a hat switch on your HOTAS, will bring up the panel you want to interact with. 
and when you're done, you just press the UI focus button again to close it. This setup lets you keep control of your cockpit displays without panels popping up randomly, so it's great for staying focused and immersed. Okay, so top tip number four, dealing with motion sickness. So motion sickness is common in VR, especially in Elite Dangerous, with all the rolling around and quick movements. Luckily, the game and the headset offer several ways to help reduce it. Within the game then, you can set some settings. Disable GUI effects to simplify your view. Turn on reduced camera shake for a steadier image. Use vehicle motion blackout to limit peripheral vision and reduce nausea. Enable vehicle maintain horizon camera to keep your view level during sharp maneuvers. And then you can disable idle hand animations to avoid distracting hand movements. And then on the headset itself, you can check and adjust your IPD, that's your interpupillary distance. And small tweaks with this can reduce nausea and improve clarity. And improve your head strap. Secure fit prevents headset movement that can worsen motion sickness. If you don't have a better strap yet, tighten the default one as much as possible. And then you can play smart. Uh, you can start with short sessions and take breaks if you feel sick, and gradually you'll find that your tolerance will improve. And obviously try and avoid longer sessions or intense VR experiences until you're comfortable. And as a bonus tip, some people have found that having a fan blowing air onto them helps to reduce the nausea as well. Remember, VR motion sickness varies by person, so try different settings and approaches to find out what works best for you. That's it for this video, thanks for watching. If you have any great Elite Dangerous locations or VR experiences to recommend, please drop a comment below. Also, if you've got tips for reducing motion sickness, share those too, it'll help other players. And if anyone can confirm that this setup works with the Steam version of the game, I'd love to hear about it. Thanks again, Commanders. Fly safe, and I'll see you out there in the black.